hello and welcome to another video and this one carries on with us building our calendar in Excel for use in Power BI or Power Query so let's jump straight back into Excel and if you remember previously we built this calendar table here um, by having a start date and a finish date and clicking fill dates and this then creates a unique list of one of each day between those two dates. So you see it goes down to the end of December 2024 because that's the date I've put in there. We also then created our accounting periods using some calculations. So we have accounting period AP 2001 and that's the start of our first period in 2020 and here we have the number of weeks in each AP and that's used in a calculation here to add on seven times the number of weeks to that date there for the start of AP2. Our APs start on a Saturday so that the last day of the previous AP is a Friday. And again, I've set this just to run down to uh, the end of 24. Um, in fact, this is the, uh, the first part, so the, the end of the financial year that starts in 23 and finishes in 24. So that's AP 23. Um, so AP 23 finishes in the end of March 24. That's why I've set my calendar to run to the end of 24 so that I've included all of those dates which are in AP 23. Now the, the last thing we've done here, um, and that's what's new to this video, is I've set some weekends. So we can now decide which days of the week are working or non-working based upon this table here. And all I've got is a simple table. Here I've got some data validation with yes, no's on it. Um, so we could set, for example, we could say Friday is a non-working day, Sunday is a working day. Um, so that might match some people's holidays. You could also use this for people who work part-time. You could set this and say, well, actually, uh, Monday and Tuesday, this person is non-working. They only work Wednesday, Thursday, so they work two days a week. Um, so those are the options we have there. Um, I'm going to leave this set as Saturday, Sunday weekends. So I could have just chosen one and then filled it down all the others. Yeah, just to make it quicker. Um, this table here, if I look at the table design, you'll see it's called D weekend. So it's a dimension and it's the weekend. Now this one here is what we're going to bring into our Power BI now. And then we're going to use this one to create a custom column to say whether it is a weekday or not. And if we then count those days, so we count the values in that column um, between two dates, we'll know how many working days or weekdays there are between those two dates. So let's first of all bring it into Power BI. So I'm going to go into my query editor. I'm going to make a new query. I'm going to get from Excel. I'm getting from this calendar file. Uh, it takes a few seconds to analyze the file. And I'm going to say I want to know whether I have my weekends and for some reason that's not showing me the weekend. I think it needs to refresh because it had actually cached a copy of it. And that's still not working. I need to save it, that's why. So I have the file here and that was on a hidden worksheet and that's why it's not coming up actually in the Power Query Editor, there is a trick to make it show, which I could have used, uh, but if I just save this file, the fact of that now being unhidden will now show up in here when I hit refresh. And you'll see that there we now have the weekends, we have the sheet, and we also have the table. Now that secret thing that I mentioned, a way of finding even the hidden files, if you just come up here, right click and say transform, on the actual folder which is in, in effect the Excel file, this will actually show you a list of all of the elements whether they are hidden or not. So be aware of that one if you ever need to get the hidden contents from a file. I'm not going to use that one, I'm going to say new source, Excel, go to calendar, 
because I've now saved it I will now see my calendar there again I'm going to get the table not the sheet so I go to the table icon that just gets me the table if I go to the sheet I could get more data if a cell below had been selected when the file was saved so I just want the table that will also automatically promote the headers if I've got headers there because the data comes from a table therefore the headers of the table are at the top here now what I need to do is I need to map across these fields here so the day abbreviation mon to wed and so on and map across these whether they are yes or no or I'm going to turn the yeses into ones and the noes into zeros now because I'm going to change them into numbers I need to make them numbers um, let me do that later on so let me change that back to text and let me change that one to text as well my weekday uh, hasn't updated yet but that red bar is showing 100% errors but they're not errors anymore so if I were to refresh my preview that will take out the fact that it's errors and it will recalculate and that should have actually changed that because these are now text values if I come out of the query and go back into the query it should now be showing me with that refreshed now what I want to do is I want to have my calendar table and I actually want to add on the extra columns so I'm just going to refresh that one there so that will refresh that as well now I need to add on the column first of all that has the M-O-N-T-U-E and so on in it so the day abbreviation and I can do that very easily from here I go to add column I want to choose my date column as the one that I want to get the date component part from I'm going to say date I want my day and I want the name of day so that's what I'm bringing in here and this brings in the name of day in full so let me just duplicate that column and now in the duplicate I'm going to type in day name short that's the name of the column now what I'm going to do is extract from this column the first three so I'm going to transform I extract the first characters and just the first three characters and I press OK that will now give me the abbreviation I need so now I can work out whether they are working days or non working days by simply mapping this column and getting the results from this column so if you're familiar with doing lookups it's very much like a VLOOKUP except incredibly faster than a VLOOKUP so what I need to do is I need to actually merge these queries together now I'm going to make sure I've got the calendar one selected because that's the one I want to merge into so that's the one I want to merge into this is the one I want to merge from which is my weekend table I need to map that one to that one this should have matched every single row because every single row does have a day associated with it and it should have found the day for each one I'm going to click OK. This returns a table. So the table returns the sat as well as the fact of whether it's working or not, the sun, whether it's working or not. So if I expand this out, I'll be able to see the day name and the weekday. I don't need the day name. And I also don't need it to be named with the original column name. I just want it to be called weekday. I click OK that's now given me those values there um, now when I'm doing my analysis I can either do a count of whether they are working days or not or I could change these into numbers and have them represented by a 1 for yes and a 0 for no now if I were to do that what I would need to do is simply do replace values so within this column I can replace values and I can then search for yes and replace with a 1. Now you'll notice that these are still staying as text so that's a text 1 
and now I would do the same again for the nose. Replace values, replace a no with a zero. And again, the zero goes in as a text value, not a number value. But now that I've got what could be number values in here, I can now change them into a whole number without getting an error message. So these are now numbers, so I could now do the sum of, and I could then do the sum of the number of working Tuesdays, for example, if I was summarism by Tuesdays. Okay, so that is how we would get our weekday values into here. Now let's just actually test this so we can have a look here and see that we have a Sunday and the Sunday is going as a zero at the moment. Let me go back into my Excel and let me change Sunday into a working day. Let me change Friday into a non-working day. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to go back into my Power BI. I'm going to refresh my preview. That will actually force the query to refresh as well. And if I now have a look here, we should be seeing that my Sunday is now a working day and my Friday is now non-working day. This table here, which is a weekend, that's the one that brought in the fact of whether they're working days or not. We don't need this to load into the data model. So we simply right click on it and prevent it from loading. Okay, that is how we put in the weekday. My next couple of videos are going to take a look at how we can take this a stage further and put in a period for holidays. And then uh, we'll create another column which tells us whether the day is a working day or not. So that's not just a weekday, but a working day, which is a day that's a weekday and also not a holiday date. Uh, my final video in the series will be how we make an exception to all of the other rules. In other words, let's say we had a day which was a Saturday. That's not a weekday, so it would normally be non-working, but the exception is that we do all have to work on that Saturday. Or it could be that although it's a weekday, let's say the Monday there, um, there may be a public holiday on that day, but if it's an exception, we have to work. So the exception will be the thing that overrides all of these other options that may turn the day into a non-working day. So our exception will be the one that has a priority. Okay, but that's all in the next video. So that's it for now from me. I hope this has been useful. And as always, thank you for listening.